Pops. Dragon's Dogma 2 came out last week, and with how much hype this baby had, I thought it was gonna bring on world peace. But instead, we heard the last thing you would want to hear a doctor say upon the delivery of your beloved child. What the fuck is that? Followed by the depths of hell opening and the screeching of a thousand angry gamers. And now the score's risen up to 55% since then, but no one's talking about the actual game. At most, I've seen the odd clip where some guy's flipping through his PowerPoint one slide at a time that he calls his gameplay. But besides those guys, it's just people slinging mud back and forth over all the shit the suits smeared this game with. And make no mistake about it, the suits went out of their way to piss people off. Because the actual game is great. Hell, please, God. Deuce, you're just healing me. You're just letting this fucking wolf tear me apart for longer. Hit it. Hit the wolf, you bitch. My suffering. End it. But Big Gaming just had to step in to tack on every last extra nuisance the gamers hate. And it's got one side going, they lopped off my left nut and are charging me to buy it back. And then the other side's going, don't be poor then, bitch. But here's the thing. They're both right. All of you are right. And saying that makes me the most right, so let's break down why the hell this game isn't rated higher than Horizon Forbidden Razor. The first reason is the surprise microtransactions. If you think that micros in a single player game is bad, you're absolutely right. To pre-order a $70 single player game, then go to download it on launch day only to find that they opened up a fucking dollar tree is preposterous. They're selling a gaggle of shortcuts and even a couple exclusive items. This is nothing but pure greed from the suits. It should not be here. But worse than that is that they're trying to trick the good paying fans who may or may not have suffered head injuries that makes them want to pay one dollar for a one-time use key when you can just spend 10 minutes exploring and looting gold to buy it in game. I can understand why people buy a cool skin when the game's got you sitting here looking like this and you're one swipe of the credit card from becoming this. But these are useless. I wish they did something for me. I would pay one thousand dollars we'll call it just to have a pawn never cold approach me again to say I suck your dick for 30 RC! Which leads me to my next point. Some people say these microtransactions don't matter because they don't affect the gameplay. You're right too! You can play the game and it doesn't feel like they're pressuring you to buy anything. These are traps for morons that want to skip past the entire point of playing an RPG, which is the progression. And I'd be angry if they made the game more grindy or cut content to push you towards the cash shop, but they didn't. In the first 24 hours of this game, I maxed out my class, half progressed to the next class, I have over 30k gold constantly. The only thing I can't easily obtain is this. And that's only because it's tied to the main story. And much like my long lost son, I've neglected it. I'm five figures, five inches, five feet, pimp, I'm thriving. Hell, to be honest with you, most of what people are angry about online is shit they cooked up in their own peanut and did a little bit of spreading of misinformation. That's my job, damn it! People say it's horrible that a game would force you to pay real money to get out of prison. You're right. Except, who said you had to stuff anything up your prison wallet to get out? You can punch your way out of that bitch for free. Hell, I've been paid to go to prison. People say, ah, Fleek, it's horrible that a game would force you to pay real money to fast travel. You're right. Luckily, the fast travel fairy stones can only be earned in game, and besides that, you can buy cart ride or the harpy harem call in. And the most common misconception, it's the first thing I heard about this game on launch, was people saying it's horrible that they make you pay three dollars to change your character. Except that's not true. You can change your character for 500 or C. You want to see just how easy it is to get 500 RC. Take your pawn, stack that rack, teach her to work the staff, and put her on the corner. There's 300, there's 500, and congratulations! You just keep taking naps and you'll have generational RC wealth. You'll be able to get more plastic surgery than Madonna. It's not pay to win, it's pimp to win. Like I said, awful practice. But when I see people saying this is literally modern Ubisoft, it's literally not. I mean, I hate to compare shit sandwiches here, but to say that these are the same... That's just stolen valor. Anyways, let's talk about something that does affect the gameplay, Denuvo. If you think it's shitty that Denuvo is in a single player game, you're right. Denuvo is like voluntary digital aids. Except there's no roll the dice, pay the price. The suits just sit there and they go, can we save one dollar from being pirated? And Denuvo goes, yes, we will protect your money for many, many hours. So the suits go, great, let's turn that FPS into a fucking EKG then, brother. And then here we are with people struggling to pump 60 frames, constant crashing for some, and overall a lot of unhappy campers. But listen, in fairness, it's probably not even all thanks to Denuvo. In fact, Capcom's already admitted they forgot to optimize their game, and the FPS are getting tanked because of the sheer computational demand that my pawn jumping headfirst into a river puts on my CPU. But of course people are getting pissed about microtransactions here. All they can do is stare at the store page because at least that'll run at 30 FPS. This is the leading reason for why they aren't outscoring the 
furry back rooms. Not even Jesus could play the game. And to add insult to injury, post-launch, Capcom's on that George RR schedule for fixing their shit. Their updates have just been... Title update. Meanwhile, you look at a game like Helldivers 2 and they're working like an ugly girl. They dropped the game on the 8th with all kinds of issues, then updated on the 9th, 12th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 20th. And if I keep doing this, I'm gonna start talking like Mike Tyson. You can see the desperation in their eyes. They wanted it. They needed it. Just like I need you to use the official Thick Front Pawn ID. Come get my Pawn Star so I can siphon dozens of dollars out of Capcom's pockets via RC laundry. Fight the man. Fight the power. And now I I hear you saying, Fleek, you're part of the problem now. You didn't talk about the actual game either. Ask yourself this. Did he stop in the middle of his playthrough just to make one big advertisement for his pawn ID so he could enrich himself with RC? My response? You're goddamn right I did. To me, wiggle to your, me, uh, to wiggle me, the moves. To me, to me, please, God. <laughs> to me, to me, fuck. You, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Jesus, no. oh my God. I'm Mash the buttons, like, wiggle I'm the I'm in line, I'm pressing everything. Please, you maids, fucking hit her with your stick. Grab the dog, I'm in, I need life alert. Oh my God. Thanks to the flock of pimps for bankrolling this video. And another huge thanks to all the pimperers. As always, there's much more to come. Stay tuned. Take out.